Hello everybody and welcome back to another video about Muse 4 and uh, some new features and some old features that uh, probably needs uh, to be explained or fleshed out a little bit more so we know how to use them. Uh, I thought we would start off by talking about different track types today. If we right click here in the track list we get a list of all the track types that we can add. First we have the two MIDI type tracks, MIDI track and drum track. And then we have all the different kinds of uh, audio creating or containing track types. We can start off with the wave track, which is nothing fancy. It's a track type that uh, can hold parts with the uh, wave uh, direct audio. We can, import a little wave file here. There's a, a guitar. Uh, and we'll continue with the audio output. And uh, this one, it's quite unusual to add more than one, but it is possible for various cases. Because you see, we already have one. And this is uh, where our audio goes outside of Muse. So if you see these small arrow points here, in input routing and output routing. Output from the output is going outside Muse. So here we have, uh, you can see we already have routing to two places. System playback is uh, out to my speakers. And these are actually for my recording software, so I set them up specifically for these uh, videos. Uh, and if we could, we can just for, for shows create another one, and this won't have anything connected here. Uh, and at, at the, it, it doesn't, I mean, we can dream up uh, cases where they, this will be useful, but it's uh, it's not common. So we'll leave that alone for now and proceed to the next one. Audio group. This is a track type that I use myself quite often, actually. Uh, my workflow uh, is generally that I have a group, let's call it uh, group guitar one. And what that means in uh, my, I mean, you don't have to use it like this, but this is the way I do it. Uh, group guitar one is where I collect uh, several tracks that contain sound from uh, the something that I've called guitar one. So if we want to dream uh, or, or just to show how this might work, we could change the output for this track. So instead of going to the output, we can change it so it goes to the group instead. Uh, and here's if I this if I, I click here now, this uh, uh, menu will be gone. It vanishes when you click on something, but you can hold down Control to keep it open. Then you can manipulate several things. But this one should be off, and now I. Uh, yeah, I stopped holding control and I will click this one. So, and it turned green, meaning that we have an active output from this track. Uh, so this one is now connected to this one. This one still has no output connected. Then we'll connect this to the output. So right now we haven't really, uh, this, this just complicated things. But if we, when, when I get further into a song, and I might have a lot of tracks here that are different parts or takes of a guitar, I can collect them all in this track and uh, handle them. I may, maybe I want to add the same effect uh, to this guitar, or, or, or I simply want to have a common place where I can control the volume for all these tracks. Then I connect them through this group track. Uh, we can actually 
and I can bring up the, the mixer. I press F10, you can see here in the view menu, menu, the mixer A is F10, so I'm pressing F10. And here we have the mixer of what we have now. So if I press play now, I press the space key E. You can see all of these tracks are updated because uh, the information is routed from the track to the group, from the group to the output. Uh, like that. Uh, and we now continue. Uh, let's go to the next thing. Uh, no, let's do it like this. Uh, another thing that we might want to do on the group track is adding effects. Uh, and then we can do that here in the F effect track. If we bring up the mixer again, we have effect racks on all the tracks. So we can add them anywhere. But if we uh, had several tracks going here, we might want to add them to the group track. So I'll double click here to bring up uh, the list of effects. So maybe we want to add a chorus. Here we have some examples of choruses. Let's just pick one. This one, for instance, you can do this one. Try chorus, hope it works. I haven't never tried that one. Open the GUI. Oh, wow. So if we now press play here, let's hear if this we can hear this. Can. I was quite subtle, but it is there. more extreme. I'm middle clicking on the mouse here to uh, disable the effect. It, it gets a bit wider. Uh, it was nothing extreme. I, I po hope the point goes across in a way that this is a, a, a good way for adding effects to uh, recorded audio. Uh, and let's continue to uh, the, uh, we'll do the aux send first. The aux send is another way of uh, adding effects. What will happen when you add an aux is that every other track will now get uh, a send level where you can send audio from that track to the aux track and on the aux track you can it, it very commonly you you add like reverb effects and things like that that you want to have add in parallel to uh, to the audio so let's add a re reverb here. Uh, what should we take? Let's take a dragonfly hall. And uh, now if I press play, we can't hear it because uh, we haven't turned up the auxiliary. can see it there but it's not really that loud let's go in here we still have a lot of when you when you cannot connect the effects like this uh, you don't really want the dry level the dry sound will be from uh, directly to the output you just want to create add effect here in this case I'll just remove the entire dry level and we can add I'll add, add them up 
much we want here. And I will add too much just so we can hear it clearly. Now there's a big reverb here. And I would just to complete this, this uh, bother me, bothers me. We need to call it something so we know what it is. Uh, and if we look at this in the mixer, there's the mixer. We can see here that this one uh, sends uh, to the aux verb. This one doesn't. And since these are s routed through one another, we don't want to send both of them. We could, however, wanted to, s to send the ver reverb after we added the chorus. It's, uh, that m might be the best way to do it, but it's a taste thing. You might want to do it otherwise. Uh, okay, back to uh, back to the track types. We have one track type left here, and it's the input. And it's, of course, as you probably already guessed, it's the opposite of out. It's where audio enters Muse. So uh, input routing on this track is uh, external to Muse. And I have two inputs that I can connect to this input. And on the other side, we can connect this uh, input track to one or more of the receivers. We can actually send it directly to the output if we if we're not interested in recording, we have some other kind of uh, real-time setup that might be interesting, but it's not for, for this case. We could send it to the track directly, or we could send it to the group. In both these cases, it would continue all the way to the output. Um, okay, that's that. Let's... Uh, also, I'll skip the middle things for now. We also have synths, and synths uh, is uh, we recommend using the dialog. And we can search. You see, there's there's a lot of effects here too, but effects shouldn't really be added here. In fact, in the coming version, uh, only a select part of the effects will be visible here. Because it's, uh, as I showed the rack, rack is the place where you add effects. There are some corner cases if you have an effect that uh, has more, more inputs or outputs than two, uh, then it could be interesting to add it here and route input, route input and outputs here in the arranger. Because the rack only supports mono and stereo effects. Uh, let's add, uh, we can click here on the synth, so we only see the synth. We can add something fun, like the calf organ, is that fun? Look a bit, but here it is. And we can open the its GUI, looks like that. Uh, now, uh, yeah, we can do the last little bit, adding a midi track. Now, since I added this midi track after the organ, it will be uh, by default connected to the last created uh, synth track. Uh, so it will be directly, um, it would be what we wanted in this case, but it possibly it didn't, wasn't what we wanted. And then we right click here on the port column and select one of the others. Let's uh, add a part here. Well, now what I did, I selected the pencil with the keyboard and I drew a part here. Now if I double click on this, we go into the piano roll. Clicking here on the keyboard, we should get some noise. We get... Uh, very organ-like noise. 
So I'll just, I do the same here. I press D on the keyboard to get the draw tool. And we add uh, like that. Okay, that sounds horrible. Maybe it's useful for something. Uh, what I wanted to uh, get to, I'm not really sure what I wanted to do. I wanted to get to templates and this was not really part of that, but it, it is now. We have gone all the way. We can do one more thing. We can take the organ and add reverb through the aux track just to show that it makes reverb. We can get a re reverb too. So, cool. Now, the final thing I wanted to show was our template system. By default, when you start Muse, it opens a template called default. 